Bigme is a very large company in the world of e-readers. So large that they are one of the only companies that has their own subsidiary called Goyue, or Goyu, or to a lesser known, Smartbook line. Goyu was intended to be more of a price efficient fighter brand of theirs to appeal to customers who didn't want to pay a massive price tag for note taking devices. Within that lineup is this one, the Goyu T1. This is the most entry level device out of all 14 Bigme units and is the cheapest standing at only $379 with a case and a pen. It has stereo speakers, Bluetooth, dual microphones, 32 gigs onboard storage, 2 gigs of RAM and a quad core 1.8 gigs processor. To keep costs down, they went with an active capacitive pen, much like a Kobo Sage or a Boyu P78. Bigme and Goyu devices have no problem with their home screens, in fact they're laid out very well. Everything is where it needs to be and there's nothing up for questioning. You have everything on the left here, notes, task list, offline books, etc. You have menu management where you can change all those. Clicking on the top brings the top down where you can have the glow light off and on. We'll show you that in a little bit later. You can refresh the screen anytime you want. You can clear the cache by pressing speed up and you can go to more settings. This is where you're going to find all your typical Android settings like text size, device passwords, smart pen calibration, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and you can also change the language. Yes, this is in English, but they only have three languages to the their names currently, they will add more as the time goes on. The floating ball is everywhere on the screen at all times. You can turn it off or on right here by just toggling it off and on respectively, although it does have some nice quick keys like cut, refresh, back home and settings. The reading experience is very good, it's very snappy, it's a very black on white kind of appearance in terms of its contrast, and you can start writing on EPUBs right away. You can take all the notes you wish, you can do underlines, you can do brackets, you can strike things out, and you can save screenshots of all your edits as well. You can long press on the screen, now you don't have to use the included app. The X reader that is included is Chinese only, but you can import Aldeco, Moon Plus Reader, anything you want because this is running Android to the point where you can sideload in APKs and it has a package installer on it. If you tap the center you get some pen choices and erasers which we'll mostly show you when we get into note taking and you can change the text right here. You can change the font size, you can change the margins, you can even change the text contrast and the picture contrast as separate elements. You can also press the drop down here and you can change point by point how big you want the font to be and it updates live in the background. The screen size is a little bit small but you can do a split screen to make double notes. So for example you can go like this, read your book on one side and while that's displayed there you can take all your notes on this side. So if you say page one you need to remember that, you need to remember the character's name etc. You can have this side by side. It mostly makes sense on a larger screen but if you absolutely had to do it you can. 7 inch is a weird screen size. It's not 6.8 so it's not ultimately pocket friendly and it's not 7.8 or even 8. So you do have this little bit of a floating in limbo screen size. It's pretty small so we wouldn't imagine you would buy this for PDFs and we wouldn't recommend that either. Although the PDF editing system is quite good and quite snappy and you get a decent pen palette alongside so you can change your pens, your erasers, etc. Not only that, you get a bunch of different options here. You get crop, contrast, scale, and rotate. You can scale this up, zoom it in, and you can take your notes from there like so. The pen is extremely quick even on PDFs and page turns are very fast. We know what the 7 inch screen size is for. It's for manga and graphic novels. It looks phenomenal. This contrast is top notch and it does give a very nice apparent feel that this screen is very close to the surface. That isn't always the case on flush screen and bezel devices but this one is built in such a way where you don't get that 
image of depth. You don't get that feeling of it being very far away from you. This is a very high contrast screen and a lot of it is to do with the fact that it is a small screen. When a screen is smaller, naturally you have a more higher density. What that means is that something that even isn't HD when compressed kind of looks more sharp and more crisp. So with that, regardless of what factors are at play, it does look very, very high quality for reading black and white manga and graphic novels. Note taking is extremely fast. This is a very low latency device, meaning that it is very quick. Unfortunately, there's some drawbacks. Again, that active capacitive pen isn't the greatest feeling on the screen, and it does need a battery to even use it. And you only get three brush styles. So you get brush, pen, and pencil, that's it. You can change the thickness, and it does have pressure sensitivity, so you do get a good bleed like so. So there are some good and some bads with it. Now, because of that dense screen like we've mentioned, it is a very high quality look. It's very sharp and the contrast is top notch, even when dealing with very thick pen sizes. You can press the screen very lightly to make these hairlines, or you can press very strong to make these brush bleeds. So it is a very good experience when it comes to writing on the screen, although customization wise, it is a little bit lacking. You do get some colors, but you really only get black and gray. White is the absence of color, so if you choose it, you're essentially just utilizing the eraser. Now, speaking of the eraser, you can use the pen itself as an area eraser. It certainly does come in handy when you want to do quick erases because you can choose anywhere you want and then you can get right back to taking notes. So you can transfer seamlessly between these two if you make mistakes on the fly like so. Limiting points aside, it's not as devoid of function as you might think. There's tons of templates available too. In fact, three pages of them, everything from vertical bar, lattice, and even music notes so you can make your own scores. Furthermore, you can click the more button and a bunch of stuff shows up. Crop, insert page, delete page, insert image, and you can insert text. Not only that, you can do geometric shapes. So if you do a geometric shape like a triangle, you can put that anywhere you want, you can change it, you can even alter whether you want a right angle isosceles, equilateral, etc. And then you can stamp it on the page. And you can transfer text, which is handwriting recognition. All you have to do is simply write whatever you want, click transfer text, and it's going to go through the entire book, not just the page you're working on, and translate everything. You then cycle through the pages until you get to the page you want, like page 4, and it translates exactly what you've written. Don't be worried about the fact that there are preloaded Chinese apps on here. In fact, it's so open that if you don't want something, you simply click uninstall and away it goes. We actually uninstalled that app, which I think is JD. You can install anything you want and uninstall anything you want anytime you want. This has a package installer on board, which means you can sideload in APK files, or you can simply download from the browser itself, like APK Mirror, the Goody Reader App Store, etc. And you can install directly from the browser on this unit. Amazon Kindle, Outlook, Google Drive, what have you. Unfortunately, due to its more economical approach at a note-taking, e-paper, e-note kind of world, it doesn't have any speed modes, which means you'll have to tread into the Big Me territory and get something like a B1 Lite or a B1 Pro in order to get those speed modes to really utilize video. You can browse YouTube and you can browse websites totally fine, but it will have to be reserved for images. Although the audio is top quality, it has stereo speakers, it sounds fantastic, it's nice and bassy, and it doesn't peak or crackle. So it's a little bit of a bittersweet audio video experience in that you can't really watch videos. The glow light on this is superb. It has a very nice orange with the orange glow light, and it has a very nice blue with the blue lights. How you counteract that is you do a mixture of both. 
Doing so means you can find a nice middle ground to get yourself a little bit of a stone appearance and with that comes a very well lit experience with it being completely easy on your eyes. And as you guys may or may not know, this is neither front light nor backlit. E-readers actually have LEDs along the sides that shoot light into a gel layer that then illuminates the screen. So it doesn't actually project very far as you can see my hands right here and it's still rather dark despite the fact that the screen itself is completely visible. Koyu stands as a fighter brand that has a limited lineup but offers entry level price points for essentially the same products as its parent company Big Me. This unit is by far the most capable and function friendly e-note you can buy for the money. Side loading apps, listening to audio and taking notes with the note taking app and everywhere else are what makes this device perfect for beginners looking to get into note taking. For GoodyReader.com and a review of the Goyu T1, this is Peter.